Hi, I'm James Muir, and this is a screencast for Make More Noise. Uh, we did a video a while back on building a drum kit with Logic's EXS24, and uh, Zach20 posted a comment on our YouTube channel saying that he liked the video, but he was interested in figuring out how you could take the separate parts of the drum track and process them uh, so that you had different processing on the snares or the kicks or whatever. Uh, what I think he's talking about is multiple outs. Uh, so we're going to do a video today covering how to get multiple outs working on the EXS24 and hope that that solves the problem. If it's not what you're looking for, get back in touch and we'll see if we can do something else for you. But definitely today we're going to have a look at EXS24 and multiple outs. So we've got a blank logic session set up here and we're going to load an EXS24 in the usual way. But instead of the standard mono or stereo, we're going to load up the multiple output configuration. And let's pull up a drum kit because that's what he was talking about in uh, his when he got in touch. Uh, so factory, drums and percussions, and we'll just pick up a electric drum kit. I don't know what any of these sound like, so let's just go for an 808 as they're completely ubiquitous. And here's our drum track loaded up into the EXS24. Let's get some MIDI in there. Um, I'm just going to step program something in nice and quickly. And I can just drag the MIDI editor up there by moving my mouse and wait till it changes shape. And then you can drag the MIDI editor up and down, make a bit more space. I'm kind of hoping this is laid out like normal. Uh, so C1 should normally be the kick, which it is. Uh, so let's just get a couple of kick hits in there. Not there. I'm just using the escape button to bring up my tools wherever I'm using them, which I find a really handy little tip. And let's just make a slight velocity change to the hats and now I'm just going to elastic band those and out drag them to copy and then elastic band all four and out drag to copy and let's put some snare hits in as well and I'm going to change the velocity on those kicks too so I just need the velocity tool again if I'm going a bit quick here you can just watch this video again but I say the main purpose today is not to show you how to program drums it's to show you how to get the multiple outs up and running a uh, handy little tip with the pencil tool is if you want a different velocity, if you click on a, veloc uh, on a part you've already laid in, it'll take that velocity and then you can use that to paste in your new hits. So let's just put a loop around that one bar and see what that sounds like. Okay, that's hardly the world's most fascinating beat, but it'll serve for the purposes we've got going today. I'm just going to drag that loop out and uh, drag the region out so we've got a four bar round of it. Okay, so that's your standard situation. If we open up the mixer now, you'll see we've got one channel, and if we were to put something pretty obvious on, like delay, you'll see that that goes across the whole thing. So the hats, the kick, and the snare will all have delay on them. Okay. Just let that delay ring off. That can be pretty useful. Uh, but if you just wanted to put delay on the snare, for example, and you don't want to unpack the MIDI and make three more EXS instruments, how would you do that? Right, well, if you come down to the channel strip, you'll see you've got this little plus button here underneath the mute and solos. And if you hit that, you immediately create a new AUX track. And then once you go back into the EXS24, hit the edit button to open up the EXS24 editor. And we've got these uh, zone groups down the side here, so snare. And if you look here, it's got an output setting which says group at the moment. So what we'll do is we'll click on the top one and hold down shift, uh, which then selects all the ones in between. So that'll work whether you've got three samples like we have here or whether you've got 20 all the way up and down the screen. And then we can select that output and we can take that to outputs three and four. And we can now close down the editor. Yes, we want to save our changes. And we'll give it a new name. So uh, let's just call that screencast so we know which one it is. Cool, we've got that saved. Now, if you look here, EXS24, outputs 3 and 4, and then the whole thing's going to the stereo out. So once you're in this situation, you can then actually look at processing things individually, and uh, you'll see how easy this is. So here we've got our snare track, and at the moment we've still got our kicks and hi-hats coming out of this channel here with just the snare coming out the aux. Now, you can go through this and keep adding more and more auxes, so you can have the kick coming out of a separate aux, 
the hi-hats coming out of separate aux, which will enable you to process them all separately. Let's go back to our original example here and we'll put some delay, uh, tape delay again on that snare channel. And this time when we do it, you should hear that the delay is only processing the snare and the hats and the kick are still clean. So let's use a slightly more real world example. Uh, we'll take a compressor. What are we digging at the moment? Let's take the TubeTech CR1B as I've just got that as my Christmas present to myself and I'm a bit overexcited about it as it got a good snare preset. Um, it doesn't appear to have a good snare. Oh yeah, there you go, snare drum. Um, so now the snare is just going through that compressor. If you solo the channel, you can hear that's just snare. So we can now Put a reverb on that snare. And if we want to, we can now process the kick and hats completely separately again. Uh, so let's put something again completely obvious on there. Let's go for distortion. Take it out of solo. So distorted snare and uh, distorted kick and hats uh, with a very reverby compressed snare. And that's how if you're using an EXS24 and you want to process the separate parts of a drum kit separately, so different uh, processes on the kicks and snares, you just do what we did there, which is load up a multiple output version of the EXS24. And then once you've done that, you select the appropriate outputs for the appropriate instruments. So you might want to do kick and snare as separate and leave everything else on the main stereo pair. And then you can process things till your heart's content or until your imagination runs out. I hope that's been useful. I'm James Muir, and this has been a screencast for Make More Noise. I'm sorry we've rushed through that one a little bit, uh, but it's Saturday and I'm going out for lunch. Thanks very much for watching.